Hello everybody. Howdy. This is our first kind of political news video, so bear with us. <laughs> um, exciting. I went to a meeting today and it was the Torrance County, New Mexico, and of course the media isn't there, wasn't there, and they w didn't cover, you know, any of it. We haven't seen any of this in the mainstream media, but this was a meeting because the Torrance County of New Mexico I was adopting a resolution to become a Second Amendment um, sanctuary county and it was instigated by the sheriff and thank you to the county commissioner for allowing me to record this entire meeting and I'm really sorry but right before they took the vote my camera's batteries died and it's like oh man but it passed unanimously and there was no disagreements no fights no protesters no mobs nothing it was handled respectfully i know it was like being in an alternate <laughs> universe <laughs> yeah. but of course the media wasn't there and right. they aren't covering this you know just like they're not covering that 29 well now i found out today it's 30 of new mexico's 33 county sheriffs have all followed suit or you know they've all done this yeah they're all adopting and 14 counties now have adopted the sanctuary counties for the second amendment and you know we always see so many negative videos on youtube about you know them taking our rights away and you know all of this and this was something positive that we wanted to share and I am so glad that I was able to record most of this meeting you know and poor Mike he wishes <laughs> he work. was there he had to work <laughs> but it was an amazing experience and they even let me speak let me have two minutes so I got to speak and um, I'm going to put the links down below to all of this and like I said I have the meeting which is about 53 minutes long so anyhow, you know, when we look at this whole meeting that took place today in Torrance County, New Mexico, it speaks volumes for rural America and where rural America really stands on the Second Amendment. Like my wife said, we hear so many negative things in the news, how these politicians are trying to grab our guns, are coming up with, you know, backdoor laws to you know, come in through the back door to take our guns, but please listen to the people that are at the podium because you have real life experiences. You have people that are willing to go the extra mile now to make sure that our constitutional freedoms are secured. In New Mexico, we really have a wing nut of a governor right now. Uh, she has done some things that have really um, going to be, is really going to start putting people in harm's way. Uh, President Trump had sent the National Guard down here to secure the border. She has removed those, that National Guard um, group of men, and almost immediately we had over 300 illegals cross the border almost immediately she's trying to make New Mexico a sanctuary state and you can just imagine the problem that's going to cause for rural New Mexico when all of these people are coming in um, bringing in their own brand of I don't know justice if you will their own brand of being criminals their drugs these are things that we see here all the time. We hear these things being reported in the news. Um, most of you have probably heard quite a few news stories out of Albuquerque where the police officers are just, you know, killing people right and left because of the criminals that are coming into this state. The gangs. The gangs. And our wingnut governor doesn't care about protecting the people in New Mexico. So we're proud to live in a county that has adopted this resolution to become a sanctuary county that they are not going to let these Santa Fe law lawmakers snatch our guns. It's just not going to happen. And as you listen to the people talk, they're not going to let it happen either. 
Well, I should mention, um, either it's getting ready to pass or it just passed, but New Mexico is adopting the red flag law. And that's what has a lot of people upset, you know, because it's just it's just so generalized and there's really no control over right. you know this and so it can pose a real danger and uh, like I said I'm gonna put the links down below and I was very proud to be a citizen of this county today and um, even now I get a little emotional so please listen you know to the entire meeting and listen to everybody speaking their mind and like Mike said, telling their stories, um, there's even a legal immigrant that tells her story, and they gave her a standing ovation. And so that was really amazing. And it was just wonderful just to, you know, be there and be part of this because it is very newsworthy. I think it's history making, and the mainstream media is not going to report it. And that's why we decided to do our first, you know, news video in this category yes so thanks for watching if you um, like things like this don't forget to like and subscribe to this particular channel we have another YouTube channel that we're kind of um, doing different things with we're going to keep these two channels separate um, so if you like this please like and subscribe and share it's in, in, in particular this uh, county meeting because it, it speaks volumes for the true minds of Americans that want to live in a country that will uphold its constitutional laws and we're proud to have sheriffs in this state that are willing to buck the system and tell the lawmakers we've had enough of this nonsense. That you're overstepping the Constitution. Yes. And so, like I said, the sheriff actually gives a speech. He's the first one to speak. <clears throat> after you know they start the meeting and listen to what he says this is amazing and I just would love to see every single sheriff in this country do this same thing and it took a lot of guts for him to do this publicly yeah so right. thank you and stay tuned and please watch all of this meeting that I do have mm -hmm. bye start us off with the place please I plead to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Stand, please, please stay standing. Please bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come today to do your work, to do your will. Father, let us be soldiers of your love, of your courage. Father, we come together today as one unit, as one family, to do your work. I pray in your name that we find the courage to do what is right. Thank you. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Two quick announcements. If there's anybody in the back needing a chair um, to sit, we can find you a chair also in the foyer uh, in the room. There's the audio to listen to it. Um, to, to speak up, we have some county employees around that will assist you. Okay. Restrooms, do we see any changes to the agenda? Item number four, adoption of resolution. Resolution number 2019-14, declaring Torrance County to be a second amendment sanctuary county. Manager, would you read it into the record, please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this is very similar to the resolutions that have been passed around the, the state and other counties. A um, couple minor changes, but uh, I'll go ahead and read it in now. It reads as follows. Declaring Torrance County to be a second amendment sanctuary county. Whereas NMSA 1978 section 4 37 1 1995 provides that counties have the power to provide for the safety, pres preserve the health, promote the prosperity, and improve the morals 
order, comfort, or convenience of any county or its inhabitants, and whereas NMSA 1978 section 4-38-18 1976 provides that a board of county commissioners has the duty and authority to represent the county and to have the care of the county property and the management of the interests of the county in all cases where no other provision is made by law, and whereas firearms training, shooting sports, hunting, and self-protection through the use of firearms <coughs> is a traditional and necessary part of life in Torrance County, and whereas the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution adopted in 1971 as part of the Bill of Rights protects the inalienable rights and individual right of the people to keep and bear arms, and whereas the Supreme Court in the District of Columbia v. Heller 554 U.S. 570 2008 decision affirmed an individual's right to possess firearms connected with service in a militia for traditionally lawful purposes such as self-defense within the home. And whereas the Supreme Court in McDonald v. Chicago 561 U.S. 742 2010 affirmed that the right of an individual to keep and bear arms is protected under the Second Amendment is incorporated by due process clause of the 14th Amendment against the states, and whereas the Supreme Court in the United States v. Miller, 307 U.S. 174, 1939, opined that firearms that are a part of ordinary military equipment or with use that could contribute to the common defense are protected by the Second Amendment, and whereas Article 2, Section 6 of the Constitution of New Mexico provides that no law shall abridge the right of the citizen to keep and bear arms for security and defense, for lawful hunting and recreational use, and for other lawful purposes. But nothing herein shall be held to permit the carrying of concealed weapons. No municipality or county shall regulate in any way an incident of the right to keep and bear arms. And whereas it is the desire of the board <coughs> to declare its support of the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution and the New Mexico Constitution protecting citizens' inalienable and individual right to keep and bear arms. And whereas the members of the board took an oath to support and defend the United States Constitution, the Constitution of the State of New Mexico, and the laws of the State of New Mexico, and whereas enforcement of any state law that violates the United States Constitution or the Constitution of the State of New Mexico would be a violation of our oath of office, and now therefore be the result that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Torrance, by the authority granted by the laws of the State of New Mexico and the people of Torrance County to stand and defend their rights and liberties, which are guaranteed by the United States and New Mexico Constitution, do hereby declare the County of Torrance is a Second Amendment sanctuary county where the rights and privileges guaranteed by the Second Amendment of the United States Constitution are preserved. Be it further resolved that this board affirms its support for the duly elected sheriff of Torrance County, New Mexico, in the exercise of their sound discretion and affirms its resolve to support decisions by our sheriff to not enforce any unconstitutional firearms law against any citizen. This provision shall not be construed to include persons convicted of violent felonies. Be it further resolved that the, this board will not authorize or appropriate government funds resources, employees, agencies, contractors, buildings, detention centers, or other offices for the purpose of enforcing the, that law that unconstitutionally infringes on the right of people to keep and bear arms. On this 25th day of February, 2019. Yeah. 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 Now Sheriff Rivera up to give a small presentation. Good, man. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, I'm here to our house here to present this. Uh, also, I will be try, try to be as brief as possible. I've been a law enforcement officer for over 20 years. Over that time, I have dealt with many issues involving firearms. I have legally seized firearms from people who were felons and those that committed crimes with the firearms. There are currently laws that allow for that. I consider all of these laws reasonable, sound, and necessary to the protection of the people I serve. Uh, with that being said, I do not find the current laws being proposed in the state legislature to be sound or necessary. The laws that are already in the books address everything that is being proposed. Uh, I will cite some of these today. 
uh, the new laws being proposed are overreaching and will allow all law enforcement officers from the local level to the federal level to enter your homes without a warrant and remove firearms with only state limits. Uh, these laws represent a foot in the door to further regulate firearms until it is cr a criminal offense for anyone to own them. I am not looking to make criminals out of the hardworking and honest people of this county. Uh, House Bill 130 is a law to criminalize the storage of weapons in relation to the proximity of children. This is already covered under 30-6-1 in state law. Uh, abuse of a child consists of a person knowingly, intentionally, or negligently and without justifiable cause, causing or permitting a child to be placed in a situation that may endanger the child's life or health. Uh, House Bill 83 is the Extreme Risk Protection Order Law that allows law enforcement to seize weapons and protection orders deemed extreme risk. Uh, we already have emergency <coughs> protection orders that address this. Judges are already allowed to mandate that weapons be removed with cause from a person. Uh, this bill has language making it mandatory for a judge to issue a search warrant to seize firearms. This decision should be made by a judge after hearing the evidence and should not be mandated by the government. Law enforcement already has the right to seize firearms when exigent circumstances are, present, or are presented. Uh, we have a process to store firearms and already provide receipts of the weapons confiscated until it is determined that there is no longer a threat. House Bill 87 deals specifically with persons convicted of domestic violence crimes not having the ability to own or possess guns. This law duplicates 40-13-5, uh, which gives judges the discretion of mandating the seizure or surrender of firearms. Federal law also prohibits a person convicted of domestic violence from owning or possessing firearms. House Bill 8 is the requirement of a background check for the sale or transfer of any firearm. The majority of sales of firearms already require background checks. This bill also makes criminals out of people wanting to sell their property. Uh, my experience in law enforcement has shown me that these bills will not affect criminals and the way they obtain firearms if they are passed into law. Burglary is already Ill illegal. Uh, that is how most criminals obtain the firearms. Homicide is illegal. That doesn't stop people intent on killing. DWI is illegal, but we continue to arrest people driving drunk. My point is that these bills, if passed into law, are not intended to enhance the safety of the everyday man and woman. They are interested or intended to restrict uh, law-abiding citizens from owning firearms and making them criminals if they do. Criminals, by definition, do not and will not follow laws. Chicago, Detroit, and Washington, D.C. have the strictest gun control laws in the nation. These cities experience the highest incidence of violent crimes involving <coughs> firearms, further proving that criminals won't follow the laws. It, in fact, emboldens them, knowing that the law-abiding citizens cannot defend themselves. These bills will start chipping away at the Second Amendment until it is completely gone. I can't speak for everyone, but I took an oath to protect the Constitution and laws of the United States of America. By introducing this resolution, I am upholding my oath as the Sheriff of the People of Orange County. Thank you. this time I'd like to invite any elected officials, local or state, for or against us, to come up and speak. <coughs> Morning, Commission. My name is Nathan Dial, I'm Mayor of Estancia. And last Thursday, the town of Estancia declared itself a Second Amendment sanctuary city. And in our resolution, we specifically referred to the sheriff as our guidance. As the sheriff is the highest elected law enforcement official in the state, higher than the state police, he has the authority to have discretionary enforcement decision, which makes us a discretionary enforcement state. So if the sheriff feels that something is excessive or unconstitutional, that is more than enough reason for me to not follow him. And in saying that, what has happened with these bills is what they will want to say is none of them are enforceable with the national, out of national registry. 
The problem with the National Registry is one, con Congress already said that's unconstitutional, and two, a National Registry has never not ended up in confiscation. And just a prime example of this, when the Senate and House decided to make a House rule that there will be no firearms in the gallery during the joint session, to include the sheriffs is a prime example of how fast a good feeling safety rule can turn into an immediate ban. Whether it was intentional or not, it did. So I'm here to represent the town of Estancia in support of the sheriff to please pass this resolution and it's not saying that we're going to just go crazy and start walking in the bars with guns and having street fights. But what it is saying is we want to protect our citizens if the current rules go through, especially 130s. One, they, they all scare me, but 130 specifically has a point that really concerns me. They tied 130 to the Domestic and Child Abuse Act, which makes it a duty to report. And just to water it down, if everything goes through, on 1 July, my sister, who's a teacher, comes visit me and still sees my shotgun hanging above my fireplace, because I ain't moving it. By that law, she would have to report it, and if she didn't, she could lose her credentials. So in saying that, I'm also trying to protect my police and my local <coughs> nurses, teachers, and anybody else that falls under, in fact, it, supposed to be anybody, but if you have certifications, you can lose your certifications on the House Bill 130. So once again, I cannot emphasize enough, we are here to support the Sheriff and the Second Amendment as it stands. Do you have any questions? Thank you. Do we have a uh, commissioners? No, well, I'll ask one more. Is there any other elected officials, state or local, that would like to speak for or against this present? Commissioners, is there any individuals you would like to call? We'll now go to the sign up sheet. They all sign up in the back and we'll uh, bring you up by name call. We'll probably call about three names and you can line up. Um, Two minutes. <coughs> Mr. Chairman Dehike, Commissioners, thank you for, for holding this hearing. We come together, I come and I speak today as the first Vice Chairman for the New Mexico State Republican Party. I am also a resident of Torrance County. We must stand united. We must stand together. We must not let them chip away at our rights. We are a responsible people. We are a responsible form of government. Michael Bloomberg, I believe, has not even been to Torrance County. George Soros probably doesn't know where Torrance County is on the map, but he definitely knows where New Mexico is. And I am ashamed that the outside money that is coming into this state to control the fine people of this state, the rural Americans of this state, the people that fight hard for the glory and the honor of this state. We must remember the overreach that is being proposed by these legislators. We must stand firm and we must be united. Thank you. One thing also I was reminded by, by my adjutant, but the Estancia American Legion Post 22, of which I am the commander, we stand 100% for this sanctuary bill, and we stand 100% for all veterans to maintain their Second Amendment rights, and we do not want a neighbor overruling what a judge may have as far as saying whether they can confiscate a veteran's guns or not. Thank you. Mr. Chair, 
Um, oh. Just for your edification, I'm going to go ahead and set up a timer here, and I'll I'll give you a bell when you have 30 seconds left, and then two bells afterwards when you're done. Just to facilitate everybody that signed up. Morning, Commissioner. Morning, everyone. In Moriarty. I am also the chairman of the Republican Party of Torrance County. I am here to let you know that as the chairman of the Republican Party and the Republican Party of Torrance County, we wholeheartedly support and stand by the Second Amendment Sanctuary County passage. We don't stand behind you, we stand beside you, supporting you and helping you. The same thing with our county sheriff. We stand with him in supporting the Second Amendment. As a retired military person, retired from the Air Force, I took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States. That oath was never taken away from me or any other veteran that has taken that oath. As a member of the U.S. Postal Service, I also took an oath to uphold the Constitution of the United States. As a member of CASA, a volunteer member of CASA in the County of Torrance, I took an oath to uphold the Constitution of New Mexico as it relates especially to children. And that oath has never been taken away. I believe very much in our constitutional rights. And when you have the county's, um, Republican county support, my individual support, we thank you and the sheriff for bringing this forward. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman and uh, Commissioners. Um, I'm here in support of the Second Amendment Sanctuary um, Resolution because I have been up at the Roundhouse in Santa Fe numerous times um, this legislative session since it began this year. I have listened to many hearings and watched our constitutional rights quickly being taken away. I know this because when I spoke up once and quoted the Constitution of New Mexico, which mirrors the U.S. Constitution, I was told that there would be no more um, threatening language like that used again at that hearing. We can laugh about it, but it's not funny. They are serious up there and they're taking our rights away. Um, Santa Fe is not listening to us and that's why I'm here today to ask you to do what Santa Fe is not doing and that is to protect us from these bills being passed into laws. I support my sheriff of Torrance County, Marty Rivera, who up to uphold the Constitution that he took an oath to. Thank you. David Smith, Smythe, Vicki Boyles, Joseph Simpson. Good morning, Commissioners and everyone present. I'm here in support of our Sheriff and the Second Amendment Sanctuary Proposal City. Um, my speech was a lot with what's already been said here, but that David Smythe, sorry, um, from Torreon, New Mexico. Um, there's the United. There more, more guns are owned by by citizens of the United States of America than any other country in the world, and yet. We are, we are ranked, and these stats come from 2015, they're a little old, but yet we're ranked 13th as far as, as, far as gun deaths. If you take out, as the sheriff uh, said earlier, the, the cities of Detroit, Chicago, Washington, D.C., and Miami, some of the most restrictive gun laws in the U.S., we become one of the safest countries in the world. The amount of guns that are owned by U.S. citizens are, are huge per capita, and yet if, if there was an issue with the, with the legal gun owners of this country, people would know it. And that's, that's not the case. I'm here in complete support of the, the resolution, and I appreciate your vote. Thank you. Hey, my name is Joe Moriarty, New Mexico. And the first, and I appreciate everybody being here. It's, it's nice that we stand up for our rights. This is from the Constitution, which the legislatures and other people 
don't want to hear it. To me, it don't matter whether you're Republican, Independent, or whatever, we're all one people, okay? We have to stick together, because if they see that they can separate us and get us fighting amongst one another, they will do it. And so please don't let this happen. Do everything peacefully. And I'm going to read here from the Constitution of the United States. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional, but I fight for this country. It tears me off that people can go in there and say one thing, then get into office, turn around, and make a 360, and say something else. That shouldn't be right. If we don't like what our people are doing, just go up to Santa Fe. You know, go up to the United States. You know, I have two sisters right now in Washington, D.C., speaking up. You know, because they all them, they carry a concealed weapons carry. Women need it. Men need it. You know, the ones that don't need it are the crooks. And who's the ones getting it? Getting it? The crooks. But let me read from the Constitution because that uh, uh, says everything in the, in, into the uh, Bill of Rights. We, the people, okay, not we, the politicians. We have to get up and speak Amen. and get them out of office if we don't like them. Okay, we, the people of the United States, in order to come... <coughs> A more perfect union. Establish justice, insurance, domestic tranquility, provide for most common defense, promote the general welfare, and sur surveying the blessing of liberty to ourselves and our prosperity. Do ordain and establish the Constitution of the United States. Sure. Okay? So I'm here as a citizen and I have been a citizen of Torrance County since 1985. I'm proud to live out here. I'm proud to serve my county. I support my government and my sheriff. But at 70 years old, I have the right to bear arms and to protect myself. I have a husband that was in the military. He's since passed. So I'm proud to be an American citizen, but I don't want my rights taken away from me. Thank you. And I'm here in support of the Second Amendment right, uh, uh, protections of this country. Um, one of the things that is most astounding to me is how our elected officials seem to deem it appropriate for them to tell us how we live our lives or what we can own or cannot own. Sorry that that kind of takes me off. The very definition of a criminal, is, as our sheriff has stated, is somebody that breaks laws. More laws they're not going to listen to. A study that was done back in 2016 showed that less than 2% of people that actually purchase firearms legally use those firearms to commit crimes. Less than 7% of the people that have gotten those weapons as gifts have used those as for a crime. The majority get them from crime scenes, which I never even thought of until I saw this study. They find them at a crime scene. They get there before the police do. Or they buy them off the black market, which no politician seems to want to admit to. Take too much money off of it, really. <laughs> you know, it's... it's it has gotten to the point where we, it is time for us to take a stand. We have that constitutional right to take a stand against a tyrannical government, and that's what this government is trying to turn into. Our politicians are turning into tyrannical government. I'm sorry, but I do not want some New Yorker or some Californian or, God forbid, George Soros telling me what we can or cannot have. It's just that simple. And I have the right to protect myself. I live alone. I have dogs, but you know, somebody can get through my dogs. But they're not going to get through a bullet if they come breaking down my door. But I actually uh, am president of the New Mexico Big One Gun Club, which is located in Torrance County. Our members, uh, Support, support the legislation that is, we protect the Second Amendment. Uh, I don't think anyone in our club has ever committed a crime that I'm aware of. We support the sheriff. We uh, think that 
Santa Fe is completely out of hand. In some cases, our government is out of hand. We, the people, need to get together and vote the people in Santa Fe out of office and put voting them in. Perkins, I'm a business owner here in Torrance County. Uh, and I'm, I would speak for several in this room, and I'd speak for several that I talked to that couldn't make this meeting. But um, we support this resolution 100%, and we like to say thank you to the commission for considering this and for, for letting us have a chance to put our opinion out there. I don't think they're listening to Santa Fe. Also, thanks to the sheriff. Good morning. Um, my name is Ben Reside in Estancia, and I am for <coughs> the um, sanctuary bill, okay? I am a widow living alone, and I need my protection. Thank you. My name is Fred, and I support this resolution 100%. Sometimes I think about uh, the men I grew up with. I'm a rancher in Torrance and Socorro County. I live west of Mountain Air. Uh, I think about the men I grew up with and the way that I was raised and the way that all our neighbors <coughs> were raised. And I think they would be turning over in their grave if they saw what was happening right now. Amen. Thank you. Any other individuals who are not spoken that would like to come up? Please like to come up to the board. Hello, my name is Steve Levin Moriarty, New Mexico. Um, in light of everything that has happened, I've been to the state capitol. I've been up there numerous times. My last, my last time there was for rights work, but I went up there specifically to ask one question. <laughs> Where in the New Mexico statutes is the violet is the code for the violation of oath of office? Amen. I have yet to receive an answer. That being said, in a, in an obvious and around our constitution, they have state officials have violated their oath of office to uphold and defend. I believe the word defend was actually taken out of certain oaths of office, but to uphold the Constitution of the United States. This is where I have a problem. I'm a history major. I went to college for history. Because I had the, the idea that if I could teach people the mistakes in history, they wouldn't be repeated. The last thing I want to do if I have time, I would love to read this. It's just a portion. This was written by Joseph Warren in 1772, addressing Boston. And it has to do with Rome. It was with noble attachment to a free constitution which raised ancient Rome from the smallest beginnings to that bright summit of happiness and glory to which she arrived. And it was the loss of this, which plunged her from the summit into the black gulf of infamy and slavery. It was this attachment which inspired her senators with wisdom. It was this which glowed in the breasts of her heroes. It was this which guarded her liberties and extended her domains, gave her peace at home and command respect abroad. And when she de de degenerated from this tyrants and oppressors, her senators forgetful of their dignity and seduced by base cover, cuts, sorry, corruption, betrayed their country, her sol soldiers, regardless of their religious relations to the community. 
and urged only by hopes of plunder and rapine, unfeelingly command the most flagrant but enormities and hire to the trade of death with a relentless fury they perpetrated the most cruel murders whereby the streets of imperial Rome were drenched with her noblest blood. Thus, this empress of the world lost her domain abroad and her inhabitants dissolute, dissolute in their manners at length became contented slaves and stands to this day as the scorn and derision of the nations of the world and a monument of this eternal truth that public happiness depends on virtuous and unshaken attachment to a free constitution. Yeah. Thank you. My name is in Florence County. And I appreciate our commissioners here uh, hearing our voice. I appreciate that you will hold your oath to the Constitution. I'd like to say I've never had the opportunity in life holding an office where I swore an oath to the Constitution. The Constitution is my life. It is who I am. Our Declaration is what I was raised by. We were given liberties and freedom, and my family raised me that way. I never expected I would be standing in a public domain fighting for my right as an American citizen, for my inalienable rights. Inalienable. You cannot give it away. You cannot take it away. It cannot be taken from me. This is what was written. This is what protected us from the time our country began. I'm, I'm sorry to say that the reason we are here today is because too many of us sat down during elections. Yes. Too many of us thought somebody else would carry the load. We can't be that way anymore. This is our freedom. This is our country. And if we don't protect it legally, like this, if we don't protect it, our rights will be stolen away from us. I thank you all for being my fellow citizens, people in my community, and people I know I can stand beside, and you will stand beside me. Amen. Thank you. Yes. Bruce Wildman, Lost Canyon Road, Torrance County. Uh, I moved to uh, New Mexico in 1983, so that puts me here at about 36 years. When I first got here, uh, they were crowing about the New Mexico budget being the first time as being reaching a billion dollars. Uh, that continued to grow, and by the time Bill Richardson left office, it was six billion dollars. For eight years, we had a governor who put the brakes on any growth and on any new taxes and restrained the state government from infringing on our rights and putting any more of a taxing burden on us. I have the great privilege and pride of saying that the family I raised here, I have two of my offspring serving in two branches of the armed forces and a daughter that serves her community in the medical field. Uh, basically, all I can really say is, and, and I'll, I'll make this quick, well, forgive me, I, I, I identify more as a constitutional conservative than I do as either a Republican or a Democrat. Uh, the only, I, I vote Republican because the, that party hasn't gained enough support yet and enough membership to be of any kind of force, but my life is lived by the Constitution, and as I've mentioned, I raised two children who are now in active duty defending that Constitution. Uh, this is what I would say in conclusion. This is what happens when we vote Democrats into office. For the record, I think we need to be very clear to not turn this into a partisan issue. It's simply the amendment we have at hand. Good morning. My name is I live in Manzano. 
And I just want to say I fully support this Second Amendment um, resolution. And I am so proud to live in a county that they have the guts to stand up to the lawmakers in Santa Fe and just say, no, we are tired of having our freedom and our Constitution rights stomped on, and we're not going to take it anymore. God bless. Thank you. I went up to a bunch of these gun bills up at Santa Fe, and I was horrified to see the signs on the door that police officers sheriffs, and deputies could not bring a gun in. They're there to protect us, and they're acting like they're going to shoot us all up. You know, that's wrong. They're trying to make our police into social workers. They're trying to take guns away from ICE. You know, they're protesting against that. Um, and I'm also a veteran, so I'm not under Democrats or Republicans. I'm under the Constitution. And several years ago, uh, I went to the VA, and I knew they were going to ask this question, do you have guns? Because all oh, veterans are psychopaths and stuff. <laughs> and I knew to refuse that. So little by little, they're in, by increments, they're taken away. You know how they work. You know, next is the magazines, next is this kind of gun. So the de um, Democrats have shown us the last two years how to resist and obstruct. Yeah. We need to take that lesson to heart. I want to remind you to try to keep this nonpartisan. Good morning. My name is I never thought I'd be here. I served in the military. My brothers served in the military. They lost their lives in the military. And I never thought I would be here to protect it. I feel that we need to do something about this. If we don't stop it now, they will continue on their way, stepping over us as if we are not here. And you know what? This is what we support. And I do support the Second Amendment. I do support the sheriff taking care of us. And I feel that I need to support what we have now and that we need to take care of it and that we need to guard it because if we don't, no one else is going to do it for us. Thank you very much. Good morning. My name and I would like to commend the council for the wording of the Sanctuary County Bill in that they have pointed out in the wording that it is not rebellious or seditious that we stand up to the state in this way, that we are following the laws of the state by doing this. So I'd like to commend the county for the very careful wording of the sanctuary bill and taking that issue out of the discussion. So thank you. Michael Godey, Tahiki. I'm actually an old school progressive. I also um, support the sanctuary, and the reason is, you know, it sounds on the surface if you're progressive that, you know, safe, but, you know, long people having guns, big guns, etc. But the problem is, is that there are people in both parties that are taking away constitutional rights. And I don't want to see a road in constitutional rights on any of the parts of the Constitution. And that includes all the amendments, including the Second Amendment. And as the sheriff pointed out, that going in to somebody's house without a warrant is a violation. It's a violation of any ethical, good country. to sell our guns to our, our neighbors or our friends. You know, we are good people. We are not going to sell our guns to criminals. We are law-abiding people. That right there makes us criminals. If they were to pass this legislation, it is unjust. And I am definitely for a sanctuary county. I do support our sheriff. And I just I don't understand how we've gotten to the point of where we have as Americans. It, it is ridiculous. Thank you. My 
name is Lee. It is often said that gun owners are compensating for something. Well, I carry a pistol because I am compensating for something. I'm compensating for the fact that I'm 105 pounds and physically helpless against criminals. New Mexico ranks number four in forcible rapes per capita. My chance at being victimized is quite real. I and my mother and my sibling, my young siblings, are in an isolated rural area. This is not paranoia. My family has been victimized. My 16-year-old brother fought off and killed a violent home invader who kicked in the back door, chased him from one end of the house to the other in less than 10 seconds. There is no way he could have unlocked the case, found the ammunition, loaded the rifle, and then engaged the criminal who was armed with a shank screwdriver. My brother, Jordan, would be dead today if we were following laws like Santa Fe is proposing. All rural sheriffs objected to proposed gun control legislation. Fourteen other counties have already declared themselves Second Amendment sanctuary country counties. Vote for protecting women from rape in the state with the fourth highest rate of forcible rape. Vote for listening to knowledgeable experts. And vote for declaring Torrance County a Second Amendment sanctuary county. Thank you. Yeah. My name is Bill. I live in unincorporated Edward County, Torrance County. Uh, and I'm range manager of the Bighorn Gun Club. The Bighorn Gun Club supports the use of firearms protection wise as far as the learning. We teach junior deputy programs for Torrance County. We teach the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, women with handguns, women in handguns. All this is done through the club. Without support of the Second Amendment and without that, this could not be possible. I believe that the Second Amendment should be upheld. I believe that what we are going for and voting for should be upheld as a member of the gun club and as a private citizen. I believe that we should uphold all of these laws and not let them be taken away. Yeah. Thank you. Chairman, Orange County Republican Party. I just wanted to add uh, some figures to you because somebody brought up the fact that we need to vote. During this last election, out of the 10,000 plus voters that are registered, that's everybody, Democrats, Republicans, it's my own so dream. Uh, liber uh, libertarians, all of those, from 10,000 voters, 5,500 voters. Oh, think about that. That's just in our county. Right? So think about that. But the primary was even worse. Republicans, 4,500 registered voters, 1,500 in the primary vote. When the election comes up in 2020, we need our neighbors if we have to take them to the voting place. Get out of the boat. Okay. Thank you. My name is Boyd McClan, and I'm speaking, but I'm a volunteer. I pastor Grace Baptist Church in unincorporated Edgewood in Torrance County. And I, my family has experienced a loved one that was murdered uh, years ago. And we didn't blame the gun, we blamed the guy who did it. Our church supports the Second Amendment. I got some members here. We have to learn how to train our people, unfortunately, which you would never hear before, to carry weapons in the church to protect us from those who want to do us harm. And we protect us as best we can. And I'm all for people who are trained 
who know how to use the weapon to do it. And I believe anybody who tries to take our constitutional rights, which I swore to as a reserve deputy years ago here in Torrance County, I took the oath to defend the Constitution of the United States and of New Mexico. And I believe that we need to take a stand for the Second Amendment sanctuary. Thank you. Hello, my name is Maria New Mexico. A little bit of a, a perspective from an immigrant. I was not born in this country. I grew up in Mexico. I did not grow up with this rights, this freedom, this, I'm sorry, I came to this country and I learned all these things and it's all, it's all real, it's not a fantasy, it's not someday we'll die and heaven will be happy, it's real here, here in this earth, and I'm sorry, I'm losing my train of thought with these emotions, um, the, the Bill of Rights, it's not only to protect us from criminals, the Bill of Rights is to limit the government on what they can impose on us. So, I encourage you not to lose that. We have here in this country, we have a, a precious gemstone that the rest of the world does not have. Make no mistake, the rest of the world looks up to the United States, sometimes with envy, sometimes with jealousy, with, with resentment. But they look up. They look up because we are the, the best, the best country, the best uh, rights. <laughs> Let us not lose it. Let us anyone that's against the constitution, any laws that that come up that are, that don't abide by the constitution. Let us ignore those laws and let us abide by the constitution. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Justin Hoff. I reside in Moriarty, New Mexico. Um, I'm up here speaking as a 4-H coach. I coach kids 4-H shooting sports. Uh, our job as coaches are to teach kids how to handle guns, be safe, and to, how to be comp competitive with sports. Uh, reading some of these laws, that now makes us liable for child abuse if we leave a gun unintended at a shooting sport competition. Kids are taught how to shoot that firearm, how to handle that firearm, how to store that firearm when it's not being used. How is this law helping? I think we need to put a stop to it. Thank you. I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say to our sheriff here, I thank you standing behind the people. When I go traveling on the road and I've gotten stopped in Los Alamos and I've had my weapon with me, I told the officer, well, the guards that were at the gate there, that I had a weapon in the vehicle and they appreciated it. So I think none of us have to hide anything from our law enforcement people. Okay. Let them know if you have a weapon. Okay, don't <coughs> let them see it because then it freaks them out. How would you feel? If there was a weapon, that you see a weapon, and in a matter of seconds, it's pulled out on you, you know. And like this uh, person that spoke, that said that uh, by the time he went running after the crook and stuff like that, to load his gun and everything else, us responsible people will have a loaded gun, but we have it in a safe place close to us. But all I'm asking is to say thank you to these guys. They want them, they risk their lives, you know. Okay. And, and these legislatures and other people, I know we elect them. <coughs> my God, when they start infringing on our rights, we need to speak up. And like my wife just spoke, there's no other country like this country. She came in legally. <coughs> they didn't have to pay a coyote five or ten thousand dollars. They didn't even have an attorney. They did it themselves. If we help each other, you stand united. Okay. If you see somebody wanting to get in this country legally, help them. You know? But we don't want crooks and other people like that over here. We already have enough of our own. We can't even support our own people sometimes. Look at some other people going hungry a bit. This, 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 this country is a great country. 
We need to keep it that way. If we lose our Constitution, any part of it, or a Bill of Rights, we're going to be like the Jews and the Indians. They'll take our weapons, then the next thing they'll do is rounding us up. And do you want that? Thank you, Joseph. We're going to have to...